Welcome to In the Know with the Bullionist. I'm Dawn Marie, the Bullionist, a Silver Level Associate and Top Recruiter at 7K Metal. Please join me in welcoming special return guest A.G. Leveraged, an enthusiast of economics, history, and politics. A.G. has a very special ability to break down the complexities of what's happening in today's world in an easy-to-digest way for our listeners and provide positive steps to take action without fear. I can really appreciate that approach as these topics can be quite overwhelming at face value. On today's show, we're going to be dissecting the topic, Can One Actually Measure Wealth in Ounces? Welcome to the show, A.G. How are you doing this beautiful day? Fantastic, Don. How are you today? I'm awesome. So glad to hear your voice, and I'm so excited to talk about today's subject, so let's get right to it. So, A.G., how do you measure wealth? Or even let's broaden the topic. How about even adding aspects of optimum health, social status, material items? How does one measure that? So we tend to measure our wealth based on our, our savings account. We measure our wealth based on, based on CDs, based on investments, on mutual funds, on our retirement fund. We base it on the equity of our homes. We base it on the size of our homes. Uh, we base it on, on the amount of dollar bills that we, that we possess. And it, it seems that it leaves us without, because in pursuit of those dollar bills, we tend to be a sickly society. We completely discount any wealth that we have from our family, from our friends, from the things that we love to do. Myself, personally, I have, I have two lovely children. I have my parents that are still alive and healthy. I have two incredible brothers. I have a wonderful woman by my side. And I'm grateful for these things. I have habits and hobbies that I love beyond my, my career, beyond my, my being a builder. There are things that interest me. I'm more than just a builder. Mm-hmm. And that's how I value wealth is who a person is, what's their skill set, where do they come from, what's their experience, are they funny, are they interesting, and maybe they're not any of those things, but but they know how to make something incredible. And so we tend to we tend to overlook some of the magical parts that make us human, that make us uh, incredible, and and in so doing, we pursue unhealth. We we, we live in a moment where people at our perimeter are on anti-anxiety medication, antidepressant medication. They're on diabetic <clears throat> medication. They're, on, they're asthmatic or, or they have high cholesterol or, or they have high blood pressure. And so it isn't uncommon for us to see people, whether they go through uh, a little container with different colored uh, medications that are a daily thing or they're on some kind of prescribed or over-the-counter medication. And that in conjunction with, with the choices of foods that we have at our perimeter, we have junk food, we have fast food, we have convenience stores that are also filled with junk foods. And so then we wonder why we're so unhealthy. And the whole, the whole time we overlook all these things and we pursue the dollar. We, we discount our health, we discount exercise, we discount that what we consume matters. Ultimately, it leads to the quality of our lives. It leads to the state of our happiness. It leads to how much fulfillment and contentment we get in everyday occurrences because inside we're functioning as we should. We're functioning, functioning at an optimum level. So how we value wealth, how we value uh, success uh, should be certainly more than just how many dollar bills we possess or how many things denominated in dollar bills we possess. Absolutely. That feels so hollow when you mention it. And (laughs) what is the state of our health? You know, assuming people have health insurance and they're insured um, and some are not insured, what is the state of our health? You know, Don, we're, we're in a moment where, well, first of all, our gross domestic product as a country Nearly 20% of it comes from the health industry, uh, health care ra- rather, um, and we're talking about doctors and nurses and respiratory techs 
down to the staff that clean the actual hospital, as well as those people who represent the insurance companies on collecting the money due to them, or those who represent the doctors for collections as well. And of course, we can't leave out the pharmaceutical industry. So when you have the GDP made up 20% from healthcare alone for a country, we're really talking about a, a hospital that's disguised as a country. We're not even talking about something that's manufactured or produced you know we, we we're not we're not a european country that makes leather shoes or leather belts we're not a japanese or german country that makes giant uh cranes and and uh, heavy equipment for construction and high tech uh you know we're not solely silicon valley that that is all into ia and, and tech as well we're talking about an idea where where the majority, a lot of our cash flow comes from a non-productive side of an industry called healthcare, and from that perspective, that that's that's a concerning thing because it means that there is profits that are being made, in this case by Blackstone and KBR, uh, Kellogg, Brown and Root. They're two equity funds <clears throat> that tended they, they own the majority, if not all, of the American healthcare industry through insurance companies and through hospitals and through different uh, technologies that are related to, to healthcare. And so when a person is, is wealthy enough to invest into these equities, they get to profit from the sickness of the average American. And in this case, uh, your question was, what's the healthcare assuming that people are insured? So we're in a moment where if a person is not working and they're not insured, they're automatically eligible for care. Um, in other words, they're rewarded for non-work. And so I'm not judging why they're working or why they're not working. I'm not judging whether they're a legal citizen or not. But if we compare that to a couple that's in their 70s, let's say mid-70s, and they've done everything correctly, they've done the things that they were supposed to do that our society suggests. They have CDs, they have mutual funds, they have properties, they have investments in stocks, and they've done everything right. And suddenly one of them gets ill, and they need, a, they need, they need, they need special care. And so they look for a, for a, for a home um, to be cared for, for assisted living. And, and in, in that, when you, when you put in medication and you put in a, maybe a, a private nurse, you're easily at $10,000 a month. Uh, ten to ten to twenty thousand dollars a month, depending on the facility, depending on the on the the state of of what it is that the person needs. And so this couple goes ahead and starts to liquidate some of their some of their assets. And they may have thought that they had a very comfortable savings. They figured they had maybe savings in, in a couple of million dollars after a lifetime. But after they start liquidating and they start getting hit with commissions and taxes and fees and penalties. And likewise, they start liquidating property, and after commissions to realtors and so forth, they see that they have maybe a million dollars left, and suddenly the second spouse falls ill as well. And so they continue liquidating uh, assets in order to afford the assisted living. They could eat up a million or two million dollars within less than five years, and assuming they continue to live only then, only after they've liquidated every single asset, are they eligible for the same quality of care that someone who is not working is eligible for immediately. So when you have that kind of system <clears throat> that rewards the person who, who doesn't do it right um, versus the person who's done it right, where they're not eligible for any kind of care until all their assets are gone, then there's something, there's something wrong in that system. And, and like you and I have talked about, that's the alternative in saving and investing in precious metals. Absolutely. You know, that, that comes so close to home for me because that's exactly where my parents are at. They're in their early 80s, and they're now liquidating. They're still in good health, but they're looking at their future, and they're liquidating, and it's not looking as bright as they had hoped. Wow. Okay, so going forward then, what about measuring <clears throat> savings and asset protection in ounces? Don, I want, to, I want to touch on this regarding your parents. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, and I hope to God that everything works out the way you've imagined. 
unfortunately, they're not alone. Uh, most older older folks who really plan they plan diligently and they've they've committed to savings and suddenly they get towards towards that moment and they find that they don't have as much liquid as their planner might have told them or as they might have imagined. And it goes like water within a matter of a few years. And it's, it's a tragic situation that's occurring to our aging American population. Um, so I'm sorry, can you repeat the last question, Don? Oh, sure, absolutely. What about measuring savings and asset protection and ounces? So be, beyond um, the, the, the commissions and the fees and the taxes and the penalties and the timeline in having to wait to sell those assets, when we're forced to sell them in a state of emergency, we tend to undersell them. We don't have a choice. We need to get liquid in order to pay for, for that, that, that care that is now necessary that's emergent. Um, one of the best ways to guard against that is to have that personal savings in the form of metals and in one's own possession that one can liquidate very readily. Um, certainly one can sell them back to, in this case, you and I are, are associated with 7K metals, uh, but Really, we, we, you could sell back your metals, your precious metals, your gold and silver in one of you know hundreds of ways uh, because it is, in fact, currency. It's a liquid. And so putting all of our assets, all of our savings, all of our wealth into some of these vehicles that are, as you and I have talked many times, in the derivative form, in an equity form, which means that they're in a paper-denominated form that is a certificate that we own or a contract we own or, or an insurance program or stock option that we own, when it's in that form, it takes a little while to be able to have access to the cash. And certainly with real estate, right now it's it, it, uh, the typical home is, is selling six months, eight months later. Uh, and if it is selling faster, it's been dramatically reduced. And so once we come to terms with those things, we realize the importance of having a good amount of precious metals in our possession. We, if it's someone that is older, I'll always suggest to go towards gold instead of silver, not just because the silver is so much heavier and bulkier, not, not just to possess and to carry around, but also to, to hide. Um, and then, of course, the gold is, is something that you could hold $50,000 worth of gold in one hand. So for that reason, for older adults, I always suggest saving in the form of gold necessarily. You know, I think a lot of times older people might fear holding on to gold and silver in their possession, uh, but you have some very in, in, ingenious ways to hide it. Uh, there shouldn't be fear around robbery on that kind of thing. What is your uh, take on that? There's something called midnight. Uh, God, there's a word. I think it's... There's a, Midnight, I think it's midnight gardening, I think it's called. And, and it was, uh, it's an older term that says that you, in the middle of the night, you get a shovel, you go outside, and you bury your metals so that no one, no one can see you doing what you do except you. Um, there, there have been folks who, who've taken the time to they hide their metals so well that no one finds them, including their loved ones. So <laughs> uh, we, we, can get, we can get quite creative and, and quite, quite a quite ingenious in what we do, oftentimes in the <clears throat> sites, uh, but, uh, but certainly you know, basements and attics for, for those who are stackers and backyards under peach trees and so forth, uh, you know, th 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 those are plentiful, healthy ideas for, for saving, correct? Yeah, exactly. And so don't let that be the deterrent, you know, that, oh, I'm, I'm fearful of robbery, so therefore I want to go a different route. Just realize there's lots of options for you. And I'd like you, if you could, just uh, mention a few of the options outside of 17 metals for a person when life interrupts to liquidate their gold and silver, because a lot of people don't know how to liquidate gold and silver. So in, in, in most cities, across America, there is a, a coin. There is a silver and, and, and gold coin shop somewhere nearby. That would be the, the, the best place to go. Uh, certainly there's pawn shops, but a pawn shop is going to give a person 50 to 70% of the value of that precious metal, whereas a coin shop is more than likely to give either, close, either spot price or very close to spot price of, of that precious metal. Um, and then if it's, if it's a particular type of coin shop that 
happens to specialize in numismatics or in rarities, um, they might give even more value to something that's, that's a rarity or, or a small mintage. Of course, there's always online options. There are, if you Google gold or silver, you'll find a gazillion um, uh, companies. Uh, I'll ju I'm just going to name them, JM Bullion, SD Bullion, um, Atmax. There's a, there's a bunch of companies that will gladly buy back the silver and the gold from, from the person. Um, by the way, these companies uh, have very good pricing, but not as good a pricing as 7K metals. I'm going to put it out there. Insofar as uh, buying, insofar as buying wholesale metal, that is. Um, so, so there are those, there are those routes, and then there's also private citizens, uh, Don, that that I know that that will happily buy uh, silver back and gold back from from people, and and that that happens all the time. And why? <clears throat> the obvious question is going to be, can't I just go to the local bank and sell back gold and silver? And if not, why? We used to be able to, when when the silver and the gold was backed and it said silver certificate, gold certificate, a person could walk in and they could liquidate their paper and turn it back into precious metals whenever they came into the bank. And, and that used to be it. The bank used to, the purpose of the bank was to store gold and silver, which backed the paper that people walked around with, the IOUs in their hands. But the moment we started the Keynesian uh, economy, the Keynesian philosophy of of, of monies, which means that uh, the paper is no longer backed by anything and you just continue to print it and inflate it. And the Keynesian methodology or solution to inflation or to uh, lack of liquidation is just to print more. And that's, that's the, the method we're stuck in now. Uh, there's just a constant liquid. So the banks no longer, certainly not the local banks, not only do they not store gold and silver, they also don't store a lot of cash. It's mostly just digits on the screen. And it, for any person who's already gone out there to try to, to withdraw a large, sizable amount of cash, I'm sure they've come to, to the realization when the bank manager says, uh, can you come back and we can do it in, in a few days? Give us, give us a few days to, to get you that money. And then, of course, the paperwork that's necessary to fill out to justify what you need your money for where it came from, <laughs> and, and all, the, all the interrogation that, that, that takes place. Again, all this goes back to the same place, which is why go through that? Why not simply exchange it into the form of metals and possess it, bury it? Uh, there, there's a, there's a three-pronged method that says if I'm going to put it beneath the floorboards of my house, I'm going to put it beneath the floorboards, and then I'm going to put a carpet over it, and then I'm going to put a, 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 a night table right over it so that anyone who comes into the home and breaks in, it's a very unlikely thing that they'll remove all those things before they finally find it. So, um, so yeah, it's all about the precious metals, uh, in, in, in our opinion. You know, it's such a rude awakening when someone goes to the bank to get a large sum out and sees all that, that they have to wait days. There's all that interrogation. So really interesting. And going back to that buyback, I absolutely love the 7K Metals membership bottle because when you become a member of 7K Metals, you have access to the highest buyback. And how that would work is as a member, you would send in a list of your inventory to the office. They would give you a quote on what the buyback is. And we offer, we're so transparent, we offer um, one of the highest buybacks out there over spot in most cases, 95% of the time. And then you can take that quote to your local precious metals coin dealers down the street and see the difference. So many times people are being gouged because they didn't do their due diligence. They didn't do their price comparisons. And so that's something that we're going to be really transparent on. And if it's a fit, then you simply um, send it back to us. We're going to uh, wire the funds to you within days. So really cool. I love it. So, A.G., in closing today, can you top us off with a positive tip of the day? And also, you're so eloquent about your disclaimer about how we're not financial advisors. If you could mix those two together, um, that would be awesome. Not only are we not financial advisors, we're not licensed to give out financial advice. If somebody wants professional financial advice, please seek a licensed professional. 
but we're also not healthcare professionals. Here we are talking about healthcare. Um, please don't stop going to your doctors, and please don't stop taking care of your health. Uh, these are broad topics that you and I enjoy talking about. They're topics that I enjoy reading and researching. I do not watch television, and therefore I have a lot of time on my hands. So I tend to to research and read, and and I bring that and I share that with you, Don, and hopefully with people who who find it of interest and who get something out of it. Well, I think they are definitely getting a lot out of this. <laughs> so what's our tip of the day? Our tip of the day is stay true to yourself. Um, know your worth. And we know our worth based on our, on our knowledge and our know-how. Uh, there is no other way to know our worth. And let's not succumb to what, what society believes are, are the norms. There's a lot of societal norms out there that we just we start to live without actually ever questioning. And that's everything from watching television five, six hours a day, which is what the average American does, to consuming food that's readily available and convenient and very cheap at our disposal at every corner. But it's also very expensive because it steals from our health. It forces us back into that, that, uh, that hospital country that we belong to. And so take responsibility for oneself learn to be joyful, measure wealth in the form of family and health and in those things that, that you can't touch, that you, that you can't hear, that, and in those things that are called love and, and moments and memories and family and, and nature and the lakeside and trip to the beach and trip to the park or a jog or a walk or a hike, all those things that we can do for free. Uh, you know, photography, painting, writing, uh, learning how to sing, uh, learning how to cook, or just when cleaning one's home. Sometimes the disorganization in our minds is contingent on the disorganization of our tabletop or of our homes or of our car. It's, it's so crazy how we clean these things, we keep them tidy, and then our minds become cleaner as well. So that's what I would say. Excellent. I wholeheartedly agree. Your value is not derived from the, whole, the dollar. And as you were talking, it reminded me of my favorite quote, so I want to share it with you guys. I think you'll find inspiration from it. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God, and your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not in just some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I absolutely love that quote, and it just helps us to remember that being unique, being ourselves, we, have, we are liberating others as we are role models to others when we step up. As we wrap up today's segment, if you're enjoying these segments, do subscribe to our channel. Click the link in the description below the video and visit our show sponsor's website today at silverpreparedness.com. Learn even more about what's going on with those shrinky dollars in your pocket and how AG and I utilize the 7K Metals membership model to access member direct pricing to save big while stashing precious metals on any budget without any minimums. And we invite you to join our thriving team with AG Leveraged and myself. And when you do so, you're going to have access to our inner circle mentoring, vast areas of expertise, our extensive team that we bring talent to the table, and we're confident you're going to find this membership has its benefits. Lastly, if you share the vision to get the word out, feel free to share these segments on your social media channels. We need your assistance to broaden the scope of those hearing this important, timely message. Thank you again, AG Leverage, for your time and dedication to getting this knowledge out to the masses that we believe have been left in the dark. Until our next segment, <clears throat> have a full day of wise choices, being in the know, 
and you've been invited to join the 1% that are gold and silver 